exactly as he typed it. So here's the answer. No. No to all of that. Why would the moon have to be in between the earth and the sun to see it in the daytime? Maybe I'm missing some fundamental part of physics education to understand what's so baffling about this, but it seems to me that there's no mystery here. Question 3. How is it that modern science still cannot prove gravity? First of all, modern science has proved gravity. Only an ignorant fool tries to trick people with questions this stupid. If you're watching, I'm sorry if you take offense, but that's a very stupid question that is based on false premises anyways. And aside from that, even if science hadn't proven gravity exists, which it has, what point are you trying to make here? I'm not inferring what you're implying. Question 4. Do you not know there is a fourth dimension unperceivable to humans? If it's imperceptible to humans, how do you know it exists? And on that note, who cares? What if there is? What does that have to do with anything? And, by the way, the fourth dimension is time. We know about it and perceive it just fine. Question 5. How is it that when the sun sets, it gets smaller and smaller until it disappears out of the event horizon? You obviously don't know what an event horizon is. It's just a horizon, not an event horizon. At best, the sun only appears to get smaller and smaller as it passes over the horizon. It's not actually shrinking in size. And actually, I, I hesitate to even acknowledge that it appears to shrink, because the more atmosphere it has to pass through, the more magnified it appears to be. If anything, the sun appears to grow as it gets closer to the horizon. I'll tell you what, why don't you go out at about noon and stare at it until 8 p.m. when it sets. See if you can measure a real difference and report back to me when you're done. Question 6. Wouldn't that make it a new moon since it's sitting behind Earth's much larger shadow? No, it wouldn't. Does that need further explanation? I imagine it probably does. Okay. It's not a moon because it's a light source. Here's the definition of moon. Expose one's buttocks to someone in order to ins- er, I'm sorry, wrong definition. Here it is, a planet's natural satellite. And here's the definition of a star. A fixed luminous point in the night sky that is a large remote incandescent body. The main difference is the fact that one is a source of light and the other is not. Okay, this dude had a bunch of other questions, but I didn't have time to cover all of them this time. Maybe I'll do a second video on this at some point to cover the remaining questions. If anybody else is interested in answering the others, here they are. Why can't we create a rainbow indoors without glass or a mirror? Why was there lunar eclipses on Jewish festival days last year? Yes, I know, ignore the grammar, that's him, not me. Why are children indoctrinated with the theory of evolution and the heliocentric theory before they learn math? How is it that when we are on a rock floating in space, traveling at a million miles per hour, but we are able to stay on the ground? How is it that the sun is moving at a faster rate than Earth, but we never get closer to the sun, nor does it run into us while we are orbiting? So that's it guys, did it convert any of you? Let me know in the comments. Planets will have a greater dimming effect. And finally, the third method is called microlensing. This gets a little complex, but it's worth it. So when Einstein was trying to validate his theory of relativity, his equations...